It's possible to make YouTube videos without spending any money in 2024 if you're smart about it. Let's recreate this Nate Wealth Open in CapCut Mobile. Nate's team created his version of the Open right here. It's possible to make YouTube videos without spending any money in 2023 if you're smart about it. Using Adobe Premiere and After Effects. The fact that we can get pretty close to it on a tiny phone all alone is pretty freaking amazing. I'll be honest, it took me a long time to prepare all the elements and dial this in to make it easy for you. So if you could hit that subscribe button, I'd be super grateful. All the elements that I created for you are linked in the description below. Now this one is moderately advanced, so don't feel bad if you have to watch it three or four times to get it. Now once you get all the principles we cover in this one, you're gonna be on an entirely new level. I created some of the elements using CapCut's text to image AI. I tried first in three other AIs to create this laptop with cash on both sides. I wanted the laptop facing the screen so I could easily do what Nate did in his video, but LensGo AI did this, Photoshop failed me with this, and Midjourney failed with this. CapCut's AI won with this image. I'm using a mouse so you can see it here on my screen and I've got my iPhone right here so I can see it. My eyes are fried from doing this all day, but we're just gonna create a brand new project and I'm gonna go up over here where it says recents and scroll down to the folder I created that has all of the elements that you can download for free. And the first element I want is this background. Now this background I created in CapCut's AI, and then I brought it into Photoshop and I made it a little bit blurry here because it is the background, so it doesn't stand out and contrast with the other elements here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make this thing the correct duration, which is gonna be about six seconds long. So we're gonna jump over here to just around there so we have enough of it. And I'll just hit this split and delete this section by clicking on that delete button. And we're gonna make all the elements about that long, or at least most of them. The next thing we wanna do is add the camera that comes in, like you see on Nate Welt's video. And that happens at about eight frames in. So I'm gonna just zoom in with my fingers here so I can see where eight frames is. And if you look right here, you can see that's three frames and that's nine frames, so eight frames is gonna be right about there. We wanna start the camera there, and to add another layer on top of a layer, you use what's called an overlay here in CapCut. So I'm just gonna click off of that and select overlay, click overlay again, jump into our folder and select this camera, and I'm gonna hit add. And now I'm going to position this where I want it to be when it's all said and done, when it's landed, and scale it up a little bit as well. So I'm going to scroll over here to basic because it's highlighted and basic looks like this. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit more just so it kind of fills more of the frame. And I'm gonna position it right where Nate Welt kind of has his camera positioned right about there. So we need room for text here. And you'll notice that this camera that I created, I shot Leela on a green screen and then I keyed it out for you so it looks all pretty here. And you'll notice that Leela and the camera are also intentionally blurred out so that the next element stands out more. And I'm just gonna hit the check mark here. And I'm going to set a keyframe right here at the beginning. Remember, a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. We're gonna have this thing come from the bottom left and move into the frame. So we're gonna set a keyframe here so we can change the position over time. Then we're gonna move forward about eight or nine frames. I've got my keyboard hooked up as well so I can do this and you can see what's going on and I can more easily count frames. And then I set another keyframe right here and I'm gonna go back to that first keyframe. You'll know we're on it because it's red. And then I'm going to position it where I want it to start. So I'm just gonna drag it right down here to the bottom left off screen. And then when I play it, it looks like this. And that's about what I want it to do. We also want to zoom out here and make sure that this element lasts the duration. So. I'm going to just click and use my fingers to drag it over here so it goes all the way to the end. And then I'm gonna zoom back in because I need to be more precise with the next thing I add. So the next element we're gonna add is the person sitting at the desk with the Nate Wealth logo on their face. And that also is Leela. And we're gonna start that at about 18 frames. And you can see that right here is 20 frames. We're zoomed in and the F stands for frames. So we'll just go here and just back up a tiny bit and add the next element here by again clicking off of these elements and then selecting add overlay and grabbing this image of Leela sitting at a desk. 
I've also cut out the background so it's really easy to work with. You'll notice first that it is on top of everything, but we want it in between the camera and the wall. So we're just going to scroll over to layers and change the layer that it's on. We want it on layer one, which is the first layer after the camera, and then the wall still is in the background. And because I brought it in at frame 18, it's gonna start at 18. I want it to be a little bit bigger, so we're gonna click on basic and scale it up a bit by sliding this guy over to the left. Actually, right about there is probably good. And I'm gonna hit the check mark. And we want that to slide up over the course of a few frames. So I'm just gonna go forward, I don't know, maybe six or seven frames and add a keyframe. And then I go back to the beginning and add another keyframe. And then I'm just going to drag her down so that she comes up over that period of time. And now watch what happens. It looks like this. So we have both things popping up pretty quickly just like they do in Nate Wealth's video. At about 110, we have text coming in. So here is one second and there's 110. And so to bring that text in, I'm going to hit this back arrow, hit it one more time, click on text and select add text. Then I'm going to type in the text that I want here. And I want it to say make YouTube videos. So I'm just gonna type make YouTube videos. And I want a thicker font, so I'm gonna go with Monster Rot, which is down here. You can use any font you want, but this one just kind of works and it's similar to what Nate used. Next, I'm gonna click on Styles and choose this guy here because it's pretty close to what Nate does. He has a stroke around it, so I'm gonna click on the stroke and make it a little thicker the way Nate does it, something like that. Then I'm gonna select Text and make it maybe a little bit bigger. I'm gonna scale it up right about there to 18, and then I'm gonna drag it and place it above here where it's very visible. Then I'm gonna hit the check mark, and I think that's what I want the text to look like, but I want the text to type on the way Nate has it type on. It's gonna click on it one more time and select style and select animations and make sure that in is selected and scroll down to the typing style that is similar to what Nate uses. And in our case, we're gonna use type two and that types on pretty quickly. If we wanna change the duration, we can slide this guy left or right, but I think we want it about where it was, about 0.3 or 0.4 seconds and looks great. And we want the text to end right around 327. So I'm gonna scroll right around here and you can see that we're at three seconds. That's 20 frames, 25 frames. So that's about 27 frames. We want it to end right there. It's going to disappear from the screen. So I'm just gonna add a split right here and hit delete. And then we want it to leave the frame similar to the way that it came on. So I'm gonna click on it again and select style select animation. This time I'm gonna select out. This is the way it's going to leave the screen. So I'm going to select out right here. And they don't have the same exact typing setting for coming on as they do coming out. So I'm just gonna choose typewriter, which is the closest thing they have. And it's way too long. So I'm going to just drag this slider back a little bit so I can get to this guy and drag it back to about 0.3 seconds. And I'm gonna make sure this one's about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds as well. So far, our creation looks like this. That's exactly what we want. In CapCut for desktop, you can nest a bunch of clips together so you can move them together. In this case, we can't do that in the mobile version. So in order to nest a clip or create a compound clip in CapCut Mobile, you just export what you've created so far so you can move all of these elements at the same time. So we're just going to jump up here and select resolution of 4K so everything stays super high resolution. And I'm gonna export this to make a compound clip. Then we're just gonna go back, click here, and close this project. We're done with this project. Now we're gonna bring this into a new project. Hit new project. This is our most recent video. And we're just going to add it. And notice that it's got everything that we've done so far. Now we wanna modify all of this together. You may have noticed in Nate's video, it starts zoomed in and then it zooms out a little bit. So we're gonna zoom this in by clicking on it and scrolling over to basic and getting it scaled up to, I don't know, probably about 144 or so just by dragging the slider over. You can also use your fingers, but again, I'm using the mouse so you guys can see what I'm doing. So that's about right, right there from the beginning. And notice if I play it, all this stuff happens you know, much tighter here. And now we want Leela to scale down so we can actually read the text and kind of more closely match Nate's video. So we're gonna go forward a few frames till that text starts to come on. And we're going to scale it down to 100%. Now I could click the keyframe and then adjust scale, but because I have one keyframe set, if I just click on basic 
and I start dragging this to 100, look what it did. It automatically added a keyframe, which is kind of good to know. And we want to go this way, actually, to 100. Bam, it locked in. And now that would look like this. So as it's scaling down, you see the text being written on. That's about perfect. Next, we want to add that laptop on the desk with the piles of cash on the side. And that starts at about 217. You can see right here that we're at about almost at 215. So just go for it to about 217 right there. And I'm going to go ahead and click off of this so I can add another overlay. It's going to go on top of this. Click Overlay and click Overlay again. And we're just going to go ahead and jump back into our folder down here, our Nate 2 folder, because this is my second Nate Wealth video. Click on Photos. And here is that laptop on the desk that I created. And I put a hole in the middle so we can see what's going on there. Now we're going to have these scale down together. But first, let's get this up to the right size. So we're just going to slide over here and go to Basic and scale this guy up to 100%. And you already know how to do that. Locks in at 100. I'm going to hit the check mark right here. What I want to happen is have this laptop appear big and then scale down and have Leela in the background scale with it. So we're going to set keyframes for both of these right here, right when this laptop comes in. So I'm going to click here and set a keyframe. And I'm going to click here on Leela and set another keyframe. Now I'm going to go back on this laptop and I'm going to scale it way up until we can't see it anymore. So I'm just going to slide over here to scale and scale it way up to probably about 265 should do the trick. Right about there, you can start to see it come in. That'd be the first frame of it coming in. And then over the course of about six frames, it's going to land. So I'm gonna go forward six frames. And I'm going to have the laptop scale down to 100%. So it's gonna go back this way and have it go to 100%. And I'm gonna click the check mark because we're good with the laptop. Now the laptop is scaling down, but Leela's not yet. We wanted to create the illusion that Leela was in the laptop the whole time, that all this is happening in the screen. Now normally in a program like CapCut PC, we would have nested these two together and scaled them down together. And we could kind of mess with this and export, but it would lose resolution. You know, in After Effects or Premiere, you just kind of nest them. But here we just kind of have to kind of cheat it a little bit. So we've got the laptop scaling down, but to make Leela scale down, we're just going to make sure we're positioned on that keyframe and go ahead and select basic again and then scale her down right there. So somewhere around there will probably work. And we're going to hit the check mark and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's kind of a good fake job, I think. So, so far, if I click off of it so the white lines go away, we get this. Those pop on, that pops down and then that wipes off. So that's just about perfect so far. And here at about three seconds, we have some text pop on. So to add some additional text, we're just going to click this back arrow, select text and select add text. And we're going to go ahead and type our text in right here. We can actually choose our font first if we want. Doesn't matter, you do it before or after. Let's choose Monsterat. Seems to be a popular font. And then in the text bar, we type any money, which is what Nate had there. And then we're just gonna go over here to styles and choose this first guy. It adds that stroke around it. We're gonna click on stroke and make it a little thicker like Nate's. Then we're gonna position it over the top here and make it maybe a little bit bigger by clicking on text and scaling it up a tiny bit like that. And hit the check mark. Now this text is gonna stay here for the entire time. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag it out so it lasts the entire duration of this clip. And we want this to come on the way the other text came on with that typewriter feeling. So we're going to click on it and select style. And we're going to select animations and go back over here to in. It's already selected and scroll down until we get to type two. And bam, it comes on. That's about the right speed we want it to come on. It's going to stay on the whole time. We don't have to worry about it coming off. Now let's make sure this lasts the entire duration here. Now notice that as we're checking to make sure that the text lasts the whole time, that overlay, the laptop on the desk went away. How do we fix that? So we have to click this back arrow and click it one more time. And now we can see the overlay up here, which looks like this. They're kind of kind of tricky to find, but you just have to make sure you do that right. Click on it. And now we can see that, oh yeah, we never extended this for the entire duration. So it's going to drag this for the entire duration. And now we can see as we scroll through this whole thing that it lasts the entire duration. And it wasn't that big of a deal to fix. Remember, if you don't know what to do, you just click on this guy right here and make sure it last till the end or until when you want it to end in your particular situation. The next thing we want to do is add additional words in 2024. He said 2023, but it's 2024 now as we're recording this. It's going to add 2024. So it's going to hit this back arrow and select text 
and hit add text and go ahead and type in in 2024. Then we're gonna just go ahead and drag this down over here where we want it. Then I'm gonna click on styles and scale this guy up a bit. It was much bigger like that. And it remembered what we did last time. So it gave us that same font and the same stroke. We want it right about there. And we hit the check mark. And now we just need to add that animation to this guy so it types on just like everything else. So we click on style and click on animations and click on in and it's already selected. And we just scroll down to type two and it types on just like everything else does. And that's about the right duration for that guy. So, so far we have this. And we are really close and we can end this text right here. It doesn't need to go on beyond that. Next, we want a piggy bank to fall on top of all of this. So in order to do that, we need to export this. We're gonna go ahead and select 4K again and hit export. And we're just nesting the clips again, creating a compound clip like you would do in CapCut PC or in After Effects or in Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. And we're going to go ahead and close out this project, create a new project and just import that latest version. You see, we've got everything here and now we want to just add the piggy bank. We want the piggy bank to start at about 408. So I'm gonna zoom in right here and go to 408 right about there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an overlay. To add an overlay, I'm just gonna click on overlay here on the bottom, click add overlay, jump into my Nate Wealth folder right here, grab this piggy bank under photos that I created. Where? In. CapCut with its AI, drop it there. I want it to be a little bigger, so I'm just gonna scroll over here and hit basic, hit scale, and scale it up just a little bit. Because I want it to be big and obnoxious on this desk, and I'm gonna position it where I want it to land right here. And that looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna hit the check mark, and I want that thing to fall over time, over the course of, I don't know, maybe seven or eight frames, have it fall out of the sky there. So I'm gonna click here, set a keyframe, go forward a few frames, set another keyframe, go back to that first one, and drag that little piggy bank up into the sky like that. And then it'll just fall down, bam, and block everything else. And next we need the text smart about it to appear. And that appears at about 505. So we're gonna jump over here to 505. We're gonna add some text again, you know what to do. Go back, hit text, hit add text. Go ahead and type in, go ahead and type in smart about it. And because we created a new project, it forgot what we did last time, but we can scroll down here and just quickly hit Monsterat, hit OK. Then we can go to Styles and click this first guy again. Click on Stroke and just make that stroke a little bit bigger again so it's readable just like his are. And hit the check mark. And we want that to come in just like all the other ones. So we'll hit Style again. I should have just stayed there. Click Animations, go to In. And you know, I'm doing this a bunch of times instead of just like fast forwarding through it. So you can practice doing this with me. Hit the check mark. We've got Type 2 again and have a look. It types on just like the other ones. And now we want to delete it right there because we don't want it to drag on past everything. We hit split and then we just hit the trash can. Now that's the text we want, but this time the text slid up from the bottom. So we're just going to click on it, set a keyframe, go forward a few frames, set another keyframe, go back to that first keyframe and drag this text down. And so now the text pops up like it does in Nate's video. And it lasts for the entire duration, but not too long. So we're going to click here, split it, and then delete the end there. And we are getting really close. But there's one other kind of fancy thing he did in the beginning. He had the black bars open partially and then open the rest of the way to reveal kind of a cinematic look and then they opened up all the way. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now because this is already an exported clip and we have all of these motion layers together, we don't need to export this again. So we're just going to go to the first frame. We're going to scroll down here until we see the word mask which is right over here. We're going to select rectangle, select adjust, and then for the length, we want the length to go to zero, so it starts at zero, so you can't see anything. We want the width to go all the way across, so we're just gonna use our finger to swipe all the way over to 999. Then we're gonna set a keyframe for that. And then at about 13 frames in or so, which is right about here, 
we're going to open up the vertical aspect. So we're just going to click on this guy and drag it up to about 700. So it opens up partially, but not all the way. So it looks like you know cinematic bars, like from a movie theater with a wider aspect ratio. And around here looks pretty good. About that point looks great. We have a keyframe there. And then next we wanna move over to around a second, maybe a little after a second right here. And we're gonna set another keyframe right here so that it stays consistent. So between keyframes, it's not gonna move if we set another keyframe here. So like there's another keyframe, notice that the mask is not moving in between these two keyframes. And then over the course of another few frames, we want it to open up the rest of the way. So maybe at about 109 or so, I'll have it open up the rest of the way. So I'm just going to take this guy, this length that's at 700, and use my finger to swipe it all the way over to 999, and bam, it opens up the rest of the way. And now we're getting, we're getting pretty close. We've got this thing open up, these guys are popping up, we've got text popping on, we've got this computer screen showing up, more text, and the pig. I mean, this is, this is pretty fancy stuff for a free mobile editing program. None of these are professional features in the, for the pro version. This is all the free stuff, guys, so pretty crazy you can do this. Now, I'm just gonna add some little music, sound effects, and voiceover, and show you the finished product in T minus one second. There are a few more things that we could have done to make it look closer to what Nate did in his video, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with too much. This gets it pretty close. I added a couple sound effects and some music and the voiceover, and we get this. It's possible to make YouTube videos without spending any money in 2024 if you're smart about it. There has never been a better time to grow on YouTube, but there are two things holding you back right now if you're not seeing the growth you want. The first one is that you haven't mastered editing yet. The other one is that you are completely skipping the things that actually get you views and subscribers and you're not even aware. I can solve both of your problems and help you literally skip almost 20 years of trial and error with my new course, Master CapCut. In my course, I teach you everything you need to know about CapCut, getting you on the path to becoming an editing wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Imagine being able to figure out on your own what I shared with you in this video. Secondly, in section two of my course, I teach you how I went from this, this is day one when I started this YouTube channel, April 21, 2018, and about 200 videos later, I started doing this, and this is only a few months ago, so I am new. If you're new, like I just started implementing the things I teach you in section two, and I literally went from getting, you know, a few thousand views a day with 200 videos on my channel, and now I'm getting 5,000, 4,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12, 18,000 views every single day on my channel. And my subscribers, same thing happened. Remember the beginning right here? Months and months for actually for years I was getting nothing. Then I started implementing the things I teach you in section two of my course and bam, now I'm getting hundreds of subscribers every day. And this is live stuff. I'm not, I've got nothing to hide from you. Here is the last 28 days where you get a better take on it where I'm getting 286, 367. It just keeps going up and up because of the things I teach you in section two of my course. I guarantee you can do exactly the same thing or you get all your money back, no questions asked. If you want results like I'm getting right now on YouTube, please go to mastercapcut.com or click on the link in the description below right now. Since you're still watching this video, I'm guessing you are above average, so the odds of you blowing up on YouTube are probably quite high. As you probably know, you need a thousand subscribers to get monetized on YouTube, so this is the perfect opportunity for you to make more money from YouTube and set yourself up to become a full-time YouTuber. Doesn't matter what your background or niche is, what I share with you works in every niche faster than anything I've ever seen. I can't wait to see you crush YouTube and make your goals of YouTube success come true. So please go to the link in the description below or click right here and sign up right now. You quite literally have absolutely nothing to lose. You will become an editing wizard and your channel will grow or you get your money back. If that doesn't interest you, please watch this video because YouTube knows that's what you're looking for.